It may be a new sign of hope for Alzheimer's patients and their families. A study by Harvard Medical Researchers found that small doses of lithium could reverse brain aging, a preliminary glimpse into what could be an inexpensive breakthrough treatment for the disease that plagues more than 7 million Americans. I want to bring in MSNBC medical contributor, Dr. Vin Gupta. Dr. Gupta, what do we know about this study and what it could mean? You know, Chris, this is a remarkable finding, I, and we should be talking as much about it as possible. It's really extraordinary. What these, what uh, really has happened over the last 10 years has been looking at lithium and different versions of lithium than, say, what are used to treat bipolar disorder or, say, major depression, and trying to figure out, well, gosh, it looks like low levels of lithium actually are, 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 are present in early stage Alzheimer's. Can we give a form of lithium that doesn't get absorbed by plaques that are common in Alzheimer's disease? That tends to happen. And by doing so, actually replete and supplement some of these lithium levels. And that's exactly what these scientists did in mice. And what they found was if they used a certain type of lithium that didn't get uh, absorbed by all the pathologies and proteins that develop in a, in a person's brain during Alzheimer's disease, that they are able to replete lithium levels and really treat the underlying symptoms and basically restore somebody to normal functioning, which is pretty darn extraordinary. I mean, it's beyond the wildest imagination of so many people. Dr. Gupta, one aging expert, told the science journal Nature that lithium orotate, did I say that right? I think that's the, the kind good. of lithium, is, quote, dirt cheap, and it will be an embarrassment to the Alzheimer's clinical community if testing doesn't happen right away. Take us through the process to get this from that study to the point where those millions of people living with Alzheimer's may be able to have that treatment. Well, you know, Chris, we're already in, so there are some clinical trials underway in humans. So this is this is an extraordinary finding in mice. We're very bullish that there hopefully there will be a, a relevant application in humans. Those trials are underway. So the question will, will come with everything that's happening at the NIH level, Will there be funds to actually scale these studies past phase one? Phase one, Chris, is uh, for a clinical trial is are is is a new safe therapeutic agent like lithium. This version of lithium is it safe to give to humans? And is there signs of effectiveness? And there's phase two, phase three, really scaling those studies to more people. Will there be funding? That's a key question. But to your point, and to all the people out there that have a loved one that suffered with Alzheimer's disease, perhaps you uh, have early signs, uh, somebody might be watching has early signs of it. Uh, there, as they well know, there are not great treatments today, and it's really, really challenging. So th if this offers hope for people, let's hope funding is not the right limiting step. Well, I should just say um, another statistic people need to know, 12 million Americans provide unpaid care for their loved ones with Alzheimer's. The value of those unpaid hours is estimated at $413 billion in our literally closing seconds. Is there any way this doesn't make economic sense to fund this? Of course, it, it, it makes complete sense to fund this, Chris, because let's uh, let, let's be clear. Once somebody has Alzheimer's diagnosed, they're in and out of the hospital. They need specialty care. To your point, there's a lot of strain on families, caregiver support that goes unpaid. And then th those individuals can't do other things potentially that are economically productive. So this has ripple effects across society, but certainly on our healthcare system and certainly on higher cost of care. So early treatment, early diagnosis coupled with early treatment would be remarkable. Dr. Vin Gupta, it's good to end on some good news today. Thank you. That is going to do it for us this hour. Make sure to join us for Chris Jansing Reports every weekday from noon to 2 p.m. Eastern right here on MSNBC. Katie Tur reports with Ariel Reshef starts right after this quick break.